A video on motion of a point particle presented by Madhukeshwara R.S. Assistant Professor of Physics. The contents shown here are explained in this video. A vector which represents the position of a particle with reference to an arbitrary origin is called a position vector. The position vector of a particle at the position P with respect to the arbitrary origin O is given by vector OP is equal to vector R which is equal to R into R cap where R cap is a unit vector of the position vector R. The position of the particle P for planar motion in Cartesian coordinate system is represented as P of x, y. The position vector R of the particle P in Cartesian coordinates is given by vector R is equal to x into i cap plus y into j cap where i cap is a unit vector along x direction and j cap is a unit vector along y direction. When a particle moves in a plane, the particle can be described by the parameters r and theta, where r is the magnitude of the position vector and theta is the angle made by the position vector with respect to the x-axis. Therefore, it is suitable to express the position vector in terms of polar coordinates instead of Cartesian coordinates. The position of the particle P for planar motion in polar coordinate system is represented as P of r comma theta. The position vector r of the particle in polar coordinates is given by vector r is equal to rx into i cap plus ry into j cap where i cap is a unit vector along x direction and j cap is a unit vector along y direction and rx is the component of r along x direction and ry is the component of r along y direction. From triangle OPM rx equal to r into cos theta and ry is equal to r into sin theta. Therefore, the position vector in terms of polar coordinates is given by vector r is equal to r cos theta into i cap plus r sin theta into j cap. Consider a particle moving in a space along an arbitrary path. Its position vector at any instant t is given by vector r of t is equal to x of t into i cap plus y of t into j cap plus z of t into k cap. If a is the position of the particle at t1 and b its position at t2 then the displacement of the particle delta r vector in the time interval t2 minus t1 is given by delta r vector is equal to vector r2 minus vector r1 where vector r1 is the position vector of the particle at a and vector r2 is the position vector of the particle at the position b. The average velocity in any interval is defined to be the displacement divided by the time interval during which the displacement occurs. For example, if a particle moves from A to B, if delta r represent the change in displacement of the particle in a time interval delta t, then the average velocity is given by vector VAV is equal to delta r vector by delta t, where delta r vector is equal to vector r2 minus vector r1 represent the displacement vector of the particle when a particle changes its position from a to b. The direction of the average velocity is same as that of the displacement vector. It depends only on the initial and final position of the particle but not on its path.
the velocity of the particle at a given instant of time is known as instantaneous velocity that is when delta t tends to zero the average velocity tends to the instantaneous velocity therefore instantaneous velocity is given by limit of delta or by delta t as delta t tends to zero or which is equal to d or by dt now if we express the position vector in terms of the Cartesian coordinate as vector r is equal to x into i cap plus y into j cap plus z into k cap then the instantaneous velocity becomes d by dt of x into i cap plus y into j cap plus z into k cap which is equal to vx into i cap where vx is nothing but dx by dt plus vy into j cap where vy is nothing but dy by dt plus vz into k cap where vz is nothing but dz by dt. The average acceleration in any interval is the change in velocity divided by the time interval during which this change occurs. Therefore, if delta v represents the change in velocity of the particle in a time interval delta t, then the average acceleration is given by a average is equal to delta v by delta t. As the time interval becomes smaller and smaller, that is when delta t tends to zero, the average acceleration becomes the instantaneous acceleration. Therefore, the instantaneous acceleration is given by limit of delta v by delta t as delta t tends to zero, where delta v represent the change in velocity in an interval delta t or which is equal to dv by dt. Now if we express the velocity in terms of its component along x, y and z direction as vector v is equal to vx into i cap plus vy into j cap plus vz into k cap then a instantaneous becomes d by dt of vx into i cap plus vy into j cap plus vz into k cap which is equal to ax into i cap where ax is dvx by dt plus ay into j cap where ay is dv by, by dt plus az into k cap where az is dvz by dt. A vector restricted to a plane is called planar vector. Only two coordinates are required to describe such a vector. Consider a particle moving along a curve in the xy plane. Let p of xy be its position at an instant t and let r be its position vector. Draw a perpendicular vector to r of same magnitude. The position vector of the particle p is given by vector r is equal to x into i cap plus y into j cap. In polar coordinates it is given by r cos theta into i cap plus r sin theta into j cap. And its perpendicular vector or perpendicular is given by r cos 90 minus theta into i cap plus r sin t minus theta into j cap. But cos 90 minus theta is equal to minus sin theta and sin 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. Therefore, r perpendicular becomes minus r sin theta into i cap plus r cos theta into j cap. We have the position vector r is equal to r cos theta into i cap plus r sin theta into j cap and its perpendicular vector is given by minus r sin theta into i cap plus r cos theta into j cap. Therefore, dr vector by d theta is equal to minus r sin theta into i cap plus r cos theta into j cap. It is nothing but r perpendicular vector. And dr perpendicular vector by d theta is equal to minus r cos theta into i cap minus r sin theta into j cap. It is nothing but minus r vector. But r vector is equal to r into r cap and r perpendicular vector is equal to r into r perpendicular cap. Therefore, 
dr vector by d theta is equal to d by d theta of r into r cap which is equal to r into dr cap by d theta which is equal to r into r perpendicular cap because dr cap by d theta is equal to r perpendicular cap which implies dr cap by d theta is equal to r perpendicular cap and dr perpendicular vector by d theta is equal to d by d theta of r into r perpendicular cap which is equal to r into d by d theta of r perpendicular cap which is equal to minus r into r cap because dr perpendicular cap by d theta is equal to minus r cap which implies dr perpendicular cap by d theta is equal to minus r cap.